This lecture goes along with chapter five. And this is about the cell junctions. So these are connections, um, cell to cell. And cell to environment. And as with the theme of chapter five, these are all happening by proteins in the membrane. Okay. So we're going to talk about some of the cell junctions in both animal and plant cells. And then we'll actually talk a little bit about what is outside the membrane, the extracellular matrix, which was um, important in chapter four. So the first type of junction I want to talk about is gap junction in animal cells and plasmodesmata in plants. And I will tell you right now that plasmodesmata is like my favorite science word, and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, make sure you know you're the plasmodesmata. It'll be on the exam for sure. Um, that's your hint. That's your reward for watching the video. Okay, so they're both similar, and if you look at your objectives, I want you to be able to compare and contrast them. So in general, they're both basically tunnels between adjacent, which means next to each other, cells. Okay, so these are cell uh, tunnels connecting the cells, and what I want you to notice here is this little dotted line is the plasma membrane, and there's breaks in it that are allowing molecules circle and triangle to move across. And likewise with the plant cells, um, they are tunnels between connecting these two cells, neighboring cells, that are allowing molecules to move back and forth. So let's look at this a little bit closer. So again, the gap junction is in animal cells. And it's made up of these protein complexes called connexin. Okay. So it's these little kind of flower shaped structures that are embedded in one plasma membrane and in the plasma membrane of the neighboring cell. And what's cool is they can open and close. And you can see they pull the membrane kind of close together. And then molecules such as ions, amino acids, sugars, can travel back and forth between these two cells. So it's important a little bit for sharing some what we call metabolites, some um, things that the cell might need for making molecules, but more importantly, it's cell-to-cell -cell communication. And one of the important ions that can travel through these gap junctions is calcium. So in your heart or cardiac tissue, right here I want you to see this is the gap junction. gap junction allows calcium ions to move cell to cell. And this is direct, right, cytoplasm to cytoplasm. Handwriting is getting really bad. And this is fast. Right? So these two cells, they're actually hooked together by a desmosome, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then this gap junction. So gap junctions are not made to hold cells together. They're just tunnels allowing for molecules to pass between 
the cells. And um, in heart tissue, you need calcium to go from cell to cell to cell to get the muscle um, fiber to contract. And these are super cool videos, less than a minute each, um, showing how heart cells are beating in a dish in the lab. And they're beating, they have this rhythm where they move together because of these gap junctions and the quick direct movement of calcium from cell to cell. Now, gap junctions, let's go back here, are small openings, which you'll see is quite different than plasmodesmata. So like I said, you can get amino acids and a sugar and ions through, but you cannot move mRNA, proteins, polysaccharides. So those big polymers, those are way too big to move through a gap junction. Okay. In contrast, plasmodesmata in plant cells can move big things across. So before we talk about what can move, let's look at its structure. So it's quite different than a gap junction. So the plasmodesmata or plasmodesma, that's the singular, and plasmodesmata is the plural. The plasmodesmata is actually a continuous, or it's made by the plasma membranes of, of nearby, or not nearby, neighboring adjacent plant cells sharing a plasma membrane. Okay, so the plasmodesmata, um, well, there can be some proteins here controlling the size. They're not protein-based tunnels. Okay? They're actually these openings where you have a continuous plasma membrane from cell one to cell two. And so in fact, you are sharing this yellow is the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is shared, which it kind of is in gap junctions, but not to the same degree. So let's look at a little bit better picture of this. So this is just trying to show you all these little tunnels here are called the plasmodesmata. And what I want you to see again is the membrane is shared, the cell wall for plants is outside here, and plasmodesmata can change in size. So look at this small opening versus this large opening. So one of the really cool things is you can have a change in size of the opening. which means you can get big things through a plasmodesmata, such as the ER. The ER can be shared between one cell and another cell. Look at this ER, it extends in there. Okay. So that's pretty cool. So if you can extend that big membrane through there, you can definitely move mRNA and proteins. And why I like it, viruses. So I studied pla uh, plant viruses and the way plant viruses move cell to cell is they move through the plasmodesmata. And in fact, some viruses have proteins, if you're, I'm looking down here in the 
picture have proteins that actually enlarge the plasmodesmata so you can move these big viruses from cell to cell. So plasmodesmata can be very large openings, so a lot bigger molecules, including ER, can go through from cell to cell, and that's quite different than the gap junctions. Okay. They are similar in that they can both open and close, right? so you have a little bit of control, and when a plant gets wounded, it will actually close up as plasma desmata as one of its defense mechanisms. But they're different. Again, gap junctions are a protein tunnel. Here's another big difference. Gap junctions are a protein tunnel. Plasmodesmata is not. It's, it's this wide opening um, that, like I said, does have some proteins to help make it larger or smaller, but it's not just this little uh, tunnel channel. It has that continuous plasma membrane. Right? Which again is quite different than the gap junction. So here you see individual plasma membranes and they're not um, connected or shared at all. So take a look at gap junctions and plasma desmata and be able to compare and contrast um, these two structures. Another group of cell junctions are um, things that help hold cells into tissue. Okay, so gap junction here is allowing the passage of small molecules. It's not holding the cells into tissue, but tight junctions help with that, adherins and desmosomes help with that, and hemidesmosomes help hold um, the cell to the environment. So let's take a look at these. First we have anchoring junctions. And we have three different types. We have desmosomes, adherins, and hemidesmosomes. So desmosomes use a type of protein found in the, the membrane called cadherin. Cadherin. So this is a plasma membrane protein. So it's um, expressed here, transmembrane protein, and it interacts with cadherins from the neighboring cell. So this is cell one, this is cell two. And desmosomes um, are, are called like spot welds, which you can think of like a staple. Okay. So they're here, and they could be here, and they could be here, and they're stapling the cells together. One of the things you'll learn about in um, cell biology is that a big difference between desmosomes and adherins is desmosomes interact with the cytoskeleton called the intermediate filaments. And we didn't go into the details of cytoskeleton, but intermediate filaments is one type of um, cytoskeleton molecule. Okay, so desmosomes use the cadherin proteins for cell to cell anchoring. Adherins are slightly different, they also use cadherin, so it looks very similar between the cells, right? You have these cadherin molecules sticking out through the, the plasma membranes and linking onto each other. The big difference is 
uh, the cadherins here interact with actin filaments. Oh, and here's the term, intermediate filament. And instead of being like a spot weld, they actually form a band around the cell. So I like to think of this as uh, the hem in your pants, right? So you've got this nice, um, all the way around the hem of the pants, you, you're sewing to keep that hem up. Versus if you were um, making the hem of your pants with a desmosome, you would just stitch maybe every five inches, make a little stitch, a little spot, okay? So the um, adherins, and the desmosomes are both to anchor cell to cell. Okay. They just work a little bit. Anchor, Ugh, sorry, cell to cell. They just work a little bit um, differently. Hemidesmosomes, on the other hand, is cell to ECM. ECM is extra cellular matrix. And you should have read about this in chapter four, and we're going to talk more about it at the end of this um, slide. Okay. They use a totally different type of protein called the integrins. Oops. And they are like a desmosome, so they're like a spot weld. They're just hemi, half of a desmosome, because instead of interacting with another cell, they interact, like I said, with the extracellular matrix. Here it's called the basal lamina. So they would only be on one end of the cell, spot welding it to the environment. Another type of junction is called the tight junction. And the tight junctions are actually make a tight seal. So they actually can make a waterproof barrier. So where you have a lining of cells such as your intestine, you don't want the acids or um, let's say in your stomach, you don't want the acids from your stomach getting to other tissues. So you have these tight junctions that hold very tight the cell membranes together. Okay. And you actually cannot get liquid through there. That's how tight it is. So these are not mechanically strong. Though they're holding the cells together, that's not their function. Their function is to block movement between the cells. So function is to block movement of molecules. Um, how do I want to say this? From I want to say it this way. So we're making a tight seal, this lining, and they're blocking the movement of molecules um, between two cells. I can't think of a better word, but it's not movement from cell to cell, it's movement across this layer of cells. Let me show you another picture. All right, so here's an example of the small intestine. Okay. And they have these super tight junctions right here and right here, and that keeps things like bacteria. So you can imagine that these little pink things are bacteria. And you don't want bacteria that's going through your intestinal system to get into other tissue. So you have these tight junctions that, which make this nice lining, this waterproof lining. And some bacteria can actually secrete enzymes that break down this tight junction. 
And then when you have a break in your tight junction, no tight junction, molecules can move through. And what's worse, uh, maybe worse, sometimes just as bad as the bacteria getting through is this thing right here that says no control of absorption. So now you can't control water leaving, and that's called diarrhea. So when people get cholera, cholera bacteria produce a, a toxin that messes with this lining. And all of a sudden, you're releasing all of this water from the um, uh, other system here that's usually keeping, the tight junctions are usually keeping the water out. And the water goes out your body as diarrhea. And people can die within a few hours from dehydration from very severe cholera infections. Um, huge issue when we have things like hurricanes coming through, especially through areas with not great um, uh, waste disposal, right? So the water gets contaminated, people are drinking the water, they get the bacteria, the bacteria breaks down the tight junctions, and people die of diarrhea. Um, one last type of um, of, of kind of a junction, it's called a focal adhesion. Okay. Focal adhesions are between the cell and the extracellular matrix. Okay, so kind of like a hemidesmosome, but they are temporary. Okay. Um, also uses integrins just like the hemidesmosomes. And they're just shown as these kind of uh, ovals here. What I want you to understand is they're really important for cell movement. So some cells that will move throughout your body, such as cells of the immune system, will make these focal adhesions where they're connecting to the extracellular matrix and walking along. So they make some new adhesions here, these ones break, and the cell can keep moving forward. So here's just one other um, diagram of this. Here it's showing integrin. When integrin's active, it's binding to the extracellular matrix. The cell is being able to protrude or move forward, but you don't want your cells just tumbling, free flowing through your blood system. You want them to be able to move and stop where they need to. So focal adhesions are really important for cell movement. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is just to make sure you're understanding what this ECM extracellular matrix is. Okay, so extracellular means outside of the cell. And it's a matrix, it's this meshwork of proteins and polysaccharide sugars. Okay, so it's actually kind of sticky. And the extracellular matrix is um, proteins and stuff secreted from the cell to the outside space. One of the most uh, recognized is something called collagen. And you may have heard of collagen, like people get collagen implants or injections, right? So collagen is this big protein fiber that um, takes up space in the extracellular matrix. And if you look at the skin on the back of your hand, okay, you're all young enough that you probably have nice smooth skin. And that's because all this collagen's being made and it gives your skin um, strength so it doesn't tear, so you can grab the 
the skin at the back of your hand um, and you can pull on it and release it and, it and it just goes right back into place. As you get older, the reason we get all saggy and wrinkly is because we stop producing collagen and then our skin doesn't have that nice filler and so we get wrinkly and saggy and skin, older people's skin can tear a lot easier because they don't have those collagen fibers. So it makes your um, skin really weak when you um, lose that. The other thing you may have heard of is this term called gelatin, which is in food. Um, so my daughter is um, vegetarian and so she won't eat any food with gelatin. And gelatin is something that kind of thickens up food. Gelatin is made by taking animal tissue and boiling away all the cell stuff and basically leaving the extracellular matrix. So gelatin is used in tons of stuff like marshmallows and um, gummy, uh, what do you call those? Like those little fruit chews that kids love. Um, and so when my kids were little, we had um, a Muslim girl on the soccer team. And so I had to make sure all the snacks did not have gelatin because they don't eat things um, with uh, pig byproducts. And that's where a lot of the gelatin comes from is, sounds kind of gross, but like basically boiling all um, leftover pig byproducts boiling all the cells away and leaving this collagen um, and making food nice and thick. Now, as I was saying this, I think some ice creams have gelatin. Don't tell my daughter, she, she loves ice cream. Although it could be a good way to get her to stop eating it. I'll have to go look at the content. So take a look, if you see gelatin, um, that food has animal byproducts in it. Couple more pictures on extracellular matrix. You'll learn a lot about extracellular matrix in um, anatomy classes because there are lots of different types of extracellular matrix depending on the tissue type you're looking at. So for instance, bone is almost all extracellular matrix. And there's a few cells in here because you need to keep producing the bone extracellular matrix components and so the cell will secrete the collagen and the polysaccharides and the proteins um, and things like that um, but there's not a lot of cells per se in bone it's mainly extracellular matrix different types of extracellular la 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 la, la matrix you will find um, in this case epithelial cells like skin cells to endothelial cells, which are your blood vessel cells, and there's this matrix between them that connect these different tissue types. So extracellular matrix has a lot of different functions. One is organization. Okay, So um, you can see that it's organizing tissues Structure and support, I'm just going to write some more. This is just another picture to So the extracellular matrix is really important in organizing and giving cells, tissues, structure and support. Um, strength, elasticity, like I said, just pull on the back of your hand to think about the collagen and all that extracellular matrix in there. Um, and it's important for cell communication. Okay. So the reason I showed you this picture is here's two separate cells, right? And you can see things we've talked about, um, intracellular junctions, and we'll be talking about transport molecules. And then here's this extracellular matrix that is giving organization and strength between these two cells. And it's also letting things like signaling molecules, which is part of cell communication, 
find their destinations. So structure, support, organization, I guess these should be two different ones. So communication um, are some of the main functions of the extracellular matrix. And then again, like I said, in anatomy class, you'll learn about all these different types of extracellular matrix and, and how they have unique properties and unique components. All right, thank you. Ooh.